been sneezing a little bit. You know, I am going on week three. In fact, today is, I think, week three of having these allergy symptoms, and I'm not sure what it is. I'm still congested in my head, stuffed up, uh, got drainage at times, coughing occasionally. I do do not know what it is. I still think it's allergies. The rest of me feels fine. I feel strong. I feel capable. I'm able to go out and, and do work. And, and so I feel good up until about the neck up. I'm still congested and stuffy. I just don't know what it is. All right, listen. Hey, hello, hello, hello to all of you pulmonary fibrosis warriors IPF Warriors, ILD Long Sufferers, welcome to the Carnivore Lung Journey channel. I am Rob, and if you are new here to this channel, thank you so much for joining. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you, thank you again. I appreciate your time. I appreciate that you take the moment to spend with me and discuss this thing that we are going through and I want you to be assured that you are not alone there is a growing family of us ILD patients unfortunately yeah unfortunately listen we're not just growing by patients and sufferers of ILD but we're growing with caregivers who are also exposed to the trauma and <clears throat> the heartache that comes along with lung disease and uh, pulmonary fibrosis. It, it sucks at times, right? You know, we have our good days, we have our bad days. But let me assure you again, you're not alone in this fight. And we will not surrender to this disease up until our last breath. We're going to keep fighting and keep fighting. <clears throat> One, two. So I have a great, great series coming up starting today, something I've wanted to talk about for a while. And as most of you know, I am a huge proponent of getting rid of these medications that we are taking. <clears throat> Many of you know that I am on this carnivore diet, and it has been an amazing journey for me so far. You know, we... We talk about alternative medicine as being something that's holistic or something that's non-pharmaceutical. We've got this thing all turned around. When we say alternative medicines and alternative healing, today we mean it as something holistic or something that's non-pharmaceutical when really it ought to be turned around because pharmaceuticals and and, and drugs that are created in the lab, that's alternative medicine. That is the, it's the worst kind of treatment. And you may disagree with me, that's okay. I have been, you know, even this past week, I have been canceled from several channels, support groups for pulmonary fibrosis and for lung disease because of my way of thinking. And I'm not going out and telling individuals, hey, 
get off your medications. Hey, do this instead. I'm not, I'm not suggesting anyone even try it. I'm just telling people, hey, I'm trying something different. Would you like to follow me in my journey? I'm your guinea pig. I'm the one that's going to that's gonna try this, pioneer this thing without any kind of real consultation because I can tell you every single doctor will disagree with what I'm doing. Well, no, let me rephrase that. Not every single doctor will disagree with what I'm doing, but the majority of them will because they are... They believe in their medications. I don't. I don't believe in pharmaceuticals. Now, as I say that, I am still taking one blood pressure pill. And I hope very soon to be off of that as well. So here's what we're going to do in this series. I'm going to discuss some medications that I have been prescribed to take because of my pulmonary fibrosis and because of my previous health conditions with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, anxiety, panic attacks, many of those stemming from COVID and uh, and because of pulmonary fibrosis also. And I'll, I'll explain that as we go along. In this part one series, I'm going to talk about two medications and try to continue going. In the next series, we'll talk about two more. And then in the next series, we'll talk about two more. I want to try to keep these not so long that you get bored with it, but I want to try to keep it as informational and transparent as possible. Again, let me preface this by saying this is all my experience, my personal experience. So watch, maybe learn from my mistakes or from my successes, <laughs> whatever happens, and make a judgment for yourself but I am not telling you today that you need to stop all your medications, okay? So don't put that on me. I'm not telling you that. I just want you to be able to observe me, see how my progression is going with lung disease, pulmonary fibrosis, and what I'm doing as a different way of dealing with different types of therapies and healing an approach that I'm taking that is swaying differently from pharmaceutical medications. So let's get started. I want to tell you first about the medications I was taking, the medications that were prescribed to me. This is the most recent. Prior to this, I was on several more, but these are the ones that are, I think, extremely dangerous prescriptions and you can agree with me or disagree with me, whatever you prefer. All right, so the first one, gabapentin, 300 milligram capsule, also known as Neurontin. I don't know how you say that, Neurontin, N-E-U-R-O-N-T-I-N. Atorvastatin, 40 milligrams, commonly known as Lipitor. That's another one. Clopidogrel, commonly known as Plavix, 75 milligram tablet. Uh, Sertraline, 50 milligram, commonly known as Zoloft. Metoprolol, tartrate, 50 milligram, also known as Loprasor. Lisinopril, 20 milligram, commonly known as Prinavil. One of my favorites here. Talk about a money maker. Ofev. 150 milligram, generic name is nintidinib, nintidinib. I'm probably not saying that right. So let's talk about the first two today. This one, gabapentin. Gabapentin is one of the most common drugs used for neuropathic pain and psychiatric disorders. 
including bipolar disorder. Now, since gabapentin is almost entirely eliminated by the kidneys, kidney function should be closely monitored, and in some cases, dose reduction of gabapentin may be necessary if the kidneys begin to be affected, especially those with chronic kidney disease as a pre-existing condition. Why was I on gabapentin? I'll tell you. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to show you. Let me see if I can get that close up. You see that scar right there? Right along here. Oh, let me point to it. Right here. That one right there. While I was in the hospital, I had a pick line. Almost the entire 72-day <laughs> stay that I was in the hospital, there must have been a perforation in the artery of my arm because my arm swelled up to about double. It was extremely painful. In fact, it was the most extreme pain I ever imagined uh, having felt in the past. That includes issues with teeth. You know what it's like when you've had a, a very bad toothache? Some of you may know. Some of you have perfect teeth and good for you <laughs> as a result of that uh, perforation of the artery. The arm swelled up and the blood or whatever it was was pressing on the nerves in my arm. It was extremely painful. They had to, I think it was about 2 in the morning, they, they rushed me into an emergency surgery uh, to fix that problem. But it caused neuropathic pain in my arm and, and uh, I started to have issues with my fingers here where some of them had no feeling for several months. I couldn't write, couldn't hold a fork, couldn't hold a spoon. I, it didn't stop me from eating. I guarantee you I was eating. But it limited the mobility. It limited my tactile senses and anything that I could do. And I'm normally right-handed. So it really caused a lot of pain that lasted for some while. That was the reason I was on gabapentin there. Common side effects. Let's talk about gabapentin side effects. Abnormal eye movements that are continuous, uncontrolled, back and forth, or rolling. Clumsiness or unsteadiness. Yes, had that as well. Constipation. You are either constipated or you've got diarrhea. Listen, I'm serious. That, this is listed as side effects of gabapentin. I know right now it doesn't sound so serious, but keep listening. Diarrhea, <clears throat> difficulty speaking, drowsiness or tiredness, dry mouth, nausea, vomiting, altered mental status. Let's take one of these little easy ones here. Drowsiness or tiredness. With pulmonary fibrosis, you're already limited to what kind of activity you can do. So weight gain is definitely something that happens. It happened to me. Weight gain because of limited mobility. You don't have the breath function, the lung function to, to supply your muscles and your body and your organs with the necessary oxygen to keep you moving. And then you add something like gabapentin on top of that where you experience drowsiness or tiredness. Pulmonary fibrosis is bad enough. So you add one pill that has this as a side effect and then you go and see your doctor and what do they tell you move be more active go walking here let's increase your gabapentin because you're experiencing pain in the meanwhile they're pocketing large sums of money for prescription and yes a lot of times the increase in dosage means more money Serious side effects with gabapentin. Okay, we've gone through the common ones. Let's talk about some serious side effects. Violent behavior, aggressiveness, anger. How does that work as a treatment for bipolar issues? Because you remember I said that gabapentin is also a common drug used for bipolar disorder. So you know what? Let's give you a pill with the side effect of violent behavior, aggressiveness, and anger. What else? Anxiousness or restlessness. 
wait a minute, which one is it? Anxiousness and restlessness or drowsiness or tiredness? You got a pill that can't make up its mind on how it's going to affect you. Anxiety that is new or worse. Are you kidding me? There are days when I am having such a problem just trying to breathe that it affects my anxiety. I have panic attacks. So now you're going to give me a drug that can increase that anxiety and make it worse? How about this? Depression that is new or worse. Let's treat your bipolar disorder with a drug that can possibly cause violent behavior, aggressiveness, anger, anxiety, depression, irritability, mania, panic attacks, suicidal thoughts or behavior, insomnia. We're going to make you drowsy, but we're going to keep you awake with insomnia. Gabapentin, folks. That's what I was on. That was one pill, one of many pills. As a person with pulmonary fibrosis, I don't see how that pill was helping me. Is there a better way to manage pain? Yes, I felt pain because of that scar right there that you see that I told you about. There's got to be a better way to manage that pain than to give me a pill that can't decide how it's going to affect you. But it is going to affect you. A Torvastatin. That was also prescribed to me, Lipitor. What are the common side effects of a Torvastatin? I'm going to read them out to you, okay? Tell your health care provider if you have any of these side effects that bother you. Stuffy or runny nose, sore throat. You know, if you suffer from any kind of lung disease, you can have these issues without having to take a torvastatin. Muscle spasms or pain. Joint pain, diarrhea, upset stomach. Pain in your arms and legs, urinary tract infection. Those are the easy side effects right there. Of course, I could have any one of those based on what I was eating. Stuffy or runny nose, sore throat, could have been caused by something I ate. Joint pain, diarrhea, upset stomach. And they want you to let the doctor know if you have any of these issues as a result of taking Astorvastatin. Astorvastatin? Atorvastatin. I can't even say these things. While less common, there are more serious side effects with atorvastatin. Muscle problems. Muscle problems, folks. <clears throat> I know that doesn't sound too bad. Okay, sore muscle, yada, yada, yada. How's that serious? Let me continue. Atorvastatin can cause muscle problems, including muscle pain, weakness, and tenderness called myopathy. In some people, the muscle may break down, which can be serious and rarely lead to kidney damage and death. Capital D, death. Stop taking atorvastatin and get help right away. <laughs> okay. I'll get right on that after I pass away. So, unexplained muscle pain, weakness, or tenderness. Low energy levels or feeling easily tired, especially with activity. So, low energy levels with atorvastatin. And with gabapentin, drowsiness or tiredness. Dark colored urine. Fever. Muscle cramps, stomach pain, nausea, or vomiting. What else? Liver damage. Liver damage, also called hypotoxicity, can happen when taking atorvastatin. Call your health care provider right away if you have any of the following symptoms of liver damage, nausea, or vomiting. 
wait a minute, wait a minute. So call your healthcare provider right away if you have any of the following symptoms of liver damage, nausea or vomiting, stomach or belly pain. How would you differentiate between liver damage and what is considered normal side effects? It already has muscle spasms and pain, diarrhea, upset stomach, joint pain, urinary tract infections. What else? Fever, weakness, or unusual tiredness. How do you know the difference? If you have pulmonary fibrosis, we're already struggling with energy. So now you add this. <clears throat> Itching. <laughs> Loss of appetite. Light-colored poop. Dark-colored urine. Your skin or the whites of your eyes turning yellowish in color. Yeah, jaundice, okay. What else? Increased blood sugar. Atorvastatin may increase your blood sugar levels. Talk to your healthcare provider about how to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Well, you may have diabetes now, so let's add more pills. Cha-ching! Yeah, that's right. Let's add more pharmaceutical meds into your body. As if the very first one I listed wasn't bad enough. Severe allergic reactions. Fluvastatin can cause allergic reactions, including a severe skin reaction called Stevens-Johnson's syndrome, cis, which can be serious. Stop taking fluvastatin and get help right away if you have any of the following symptoms of a serious allergic reaction, such as... <laughs> Listen to this, folks. The first item they list as something you need to get help right away with, breathing problems or wheezing. That's every single breath we take. Racing heart. <laughs> Fever or general ill feeling. Fever or general ill feeling. General ill feeling. What the heck does that even mean? Swollen lymph nodes. Swelling of the face, lips, mouth, tongue, or throat. Trouble swallowing or throat tightness. Itching, skin rash, or pale red bumps on the skin called hives. Yeah. Painful red or purple skin that looks burned and peels off. Are you kidding me? Blisters on your skin, mouth, nose, and genitals. Red, painful, watery eyes, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, feeling lightheaded or fainting, stomach cramps, joint pain. These are just the first two medications of a list that I'm going to be going through in this series. Gabapentin and atorvastatin. Why would you be prescribed both of those pills? Do the benefits really outweigh the side effects. Not to me. It's bad enough having pulmonary fibrosis. And these two medications were prescribed to me. I stopped taking my medications. You know how I feel. There are better ways to deal with our disease. I know, I know it's out there. I'm not telling you to stop your medications. I just want you to be aware of what you're taking. How do you know that the side effects that you get from just having pulmonary fibrosis are not the side effects of these prescriptions that they are telling you you need to contact your doctor about if you start having these side effects? How do you differentiate one from the other? Investigate the pills you're taking. You know, blindly, a lot of us I did, at first, blindly just thought, my doctor knows best because he's a medical professional and I'm going to follow their instructions to the letter. I have a problem with that now because I made a decision to temporarily stop all my medications. I'm just going to take a break because I'm taking all these medications. I'm not feeling any better. In fact, I'm feeling worse 
And so when I go in and see my doctor, they up the prescription. And then they tell me, you need to be more active. You need to lose weight. The problem is the prescriptions to begin with counter every effort you make to get better on your own. So my decision was to say, stop. Let me take a month and just try to change my diet and be committed and see what happens. So I have questions. I'm curious, how are you feeling with the medications that you're taking now or that you have been prescribed? Do you notice a positive progression in your health when you're going in and, and having your routine visits with your doctor? Are you progressing? Do you feel better? After you're taking your medications, do you notice positive, actual positive change? Or being honest with yourself, is there little to no change? Or maybe things are worse. Do you know what you're taking? Do you know and understand the side effects? And can you differentiate between the side effects of your medication versus the side effects of having lung disease? Do you think that some of your medications contradict or counteract other medications? Do you think combined they're working for you? You know how I feel. And if you, <laughs> if you didn't know before, then you know now. And if you're still confused about how I feel, let me tell you right now. I am completely against pharmaceutical lab-created medications because I do not trust the establishment. I do not trust government. I do not trust the fact that many people cannot be bought off. I know it sounds like a conspiracy theorist, and I have been called a conspiracy theorist, and I'm okay by that because Regardless of what your doctor says or what my doctor says, regardless of what the medications claim to do, I can tell you that me right now, having stopped all but one of my medications and altering my diet, I feel much better than I ever have than when I was on all of those medications. So yes, I am against medications because I feel so much better now off of them than I did when I was on them. And I've said this before also, your doctor prescribes medications based on the labs, yes, but do you realize how those medications affect your labs? Another thing also, the doctor will ask you, Hey, how are you feeling today? And based on your answer, that's how they're going to treat your illness or how you're feeling. It could have just been a bad day that you went into the doctor's office. All right, so listen, I hope you're staying with me. Even if you don't agree with me, that's okay. In our next series, we're going to talk about two more drugs. And we're just going to keep going and going and going through my list. And you weigh the side effects versus the benefits. And is it worth it to you? It wasn't for me. Either way, regardless of how you feel, regardless of how you think, God bless you. And thank you so much for taking the time to hear me rant and rave and give you my conspiracy theories. But mostly, thank you for following in my journey. I hope that you will see the positive effects, and I hope that I can encourage you to keep your mind open to alternative therapies, alternative ways of treating certain things. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.